Hello, and welcome to worship on this very special day. Happy Father's Day to all you dads. I hope this day is filled with much joy for you. My name is Bonnie Taylor, and I'm the pastor of Faith United and West Sunbury Presbyterian Churches. I'm happy to announce that after much prayer, deliberation, and the work of our COVID-19 response task force that was made up of members from both churches, the sessions have voted to work towards beginning to meet again for corporate worship on Sunday, August 9th. Our highest priority is the health and safety of each person who enters our buildings. So when we come together, we'll do so in a way that complies with the CDC recommendations for faith communities. And we have a strategy to do that. Watch your mail and our online worship for more details to follow. It will be good to be together again. Now, hear our call to worship. Let us praise God the Creator, who's filled with glory and power, with holiness and splendor. Let's worship God the Savior, who's filled with love and compassion, with justice and peace. Let's experience God the Spirit, who fills us with faith and joy, with love and eternal life. Come, let us worship God. Please join me now for a prayer for illumination. Let's pray. O oh God, open our hearts and minds by the power of your Holy Spirit, that as the scriptures are read and your word is proclaimed, we may hear what you are saying to us today. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 7 to 11. Hear God's word. Ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. And everyone who searches, finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for bread, will give a stone? Or if the child asks for a fish, will give a snake? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good things to those who ask him? The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This past year, I heard the story of a Baptist pastor who'd gone fishing with his young son. Somehow, the son slipped on the bank and fell into the river. That current quickly took hold of him and his life was in danger. The father couldn't swim, but without a moment's hesitation, he jumped into the waters and was able to reach his son. Struggling in the swirling current, he somehow managed to push his son back to the shore. He was able to save his son, but unable to save himself. And tragically, that loving father died. It was the instinct of the moment 
to leap into those waters and do whatever he could to save his son. It was the instinct of love, and I think it would be the instinct, the instantaneous response of almost any parent in the same circumstance. Of all the names for God, and there are dozens ranging from the creator to the rock, one of the most meaningful, one of the most poignant is the one Jesus taught us, Father. The references to God as Father literally fill the pages of scripture. In the Psalms, we find Father to the fatherless and my Father, my God. In Isaiah, the mighty God, the everlasting Father and our Father, our Redeemer and on and on it goes. In the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus referred to the Father no less than 17 times. In Matthew 23, 9, he even goes so far to say, don't call anyone on earth Father, for you have one Father and he is in heaven. And of course, when Jesus was asked to teach us how to pray, he taught us to address the God of all creation as our Father. Some of us might experience the image of God as a father to be a barrier. Perhaps you were abandoned by your father at an early age. Perhaps he ignored you or abused you or he was too controlling. Or maybe your dad struggled with addiction like mine did. Our earthly experience of our fathers can make us wonder just what kind of God we worship. But just as there's a vast difference between the scratched and worn recording of a Mendelssohn symphony and the symphony itself, the symphony as it was intended to be played by its master, so there's a chasm between what some of us have experienced of our earthly fathers and the fatherhood of our creator. That doesn't mean we can't catch a glimmer of our heavenly father's reflection as we look around us though catch a glimpse of God's love in the selfless act of that Baptist pastor, catch a glimpse of God's presence in the sight of a father and son playing catch in the early evening hours, catch a glimpse of God's commitment in a parent's refusal to accept a very attractive job offer out of state because it would be just too hard for the kids if they had to move. So what does it mean to call God Father? Well, first of all, it means that our relationship with God is very personal. A relationship in which we're known and can come to know God as a caring parent. Like the prodigal son, some of us have wandered away from an intimate relationship with our Father God. We're in the far country, a land of our own choosing as we seek to do things in our own way according to our own wants, needs, and desires but the father is still there, still getting up each morning and climbing up on that roof of the house and scanning the horizon for us. We aren't a stranger to him. We're his children and he longs for us to come back home, to come back under his roof, under his protection and his provision once more. That's the kind of relationship God has with us. God knows us, we're his children and God is waiting for us even now. But to call God our Father also means to know God as our guide. One of the most important functions of a parent is to be there for the child and to share the wisdom and experience of an adult perspective. So God, as a caring parent, offers us his wisdom and guidance, not for God's sake, but so that we might know this life in all of its fullness and in all its richness and joy. Some of you may remember Hurricane Andrew and the devastation it brought throughout Southern Florida in 1992. It was the third costliest hurricane in US history and the most destructive in Florida's history until surpassed by Katrina in 2005. In the aftermath of Hurricane Andrew, a TV crew was filming its widespread destruction when they came on one house that was still standing on its foundation. The owner was cleaning up his yard when the reporter approached him. Sir, why is your house the only one still standing? How did you manage to escape the severe damage of the hurricane? I built this house myself, he replied. I also built it according to the state building code. When the code called for two by six roof trusses, I used 
two by six roof trusses. I was told that a house built according to that code would withstand a hurricane. I did, and it did. I suppose no one else around here followed the building code. God doesn't give us his standards and his guidance to be arbitrary. He doesn't do it simply to see us blindly obey. No, God gives us his guidance for our own sakes. He gives us his guidance because he cares. To call God Father is to know him as a deeply personal God. It's also to know God as our guide. But finally, to call God Father is to know him as our provider, as one who is at work in our lives according to his own good and perfect purposes. Does that mean that he's going to answer our every prayer just the way that we'd hoped? Prayer would be a mighty, fearful thing if God chose to act on our wisdom instead of his own. No, the responsibility of a parent is to respond according to what's best and not necessarily according to what a child wants. Yet, even in the midst of our disappointments, even in the midst of our struggles, God is surely there. Gladys Allward was a missionary in China during the Second World War and was forced to flee when the Japanese invaded Yang Cheng. But she couldn't leave the orphans for whom she cared behind. And so, with the help of a single assistant, she led more than a hundred orphans over the mountains and toward freedom. During the journey, she grappled with despair. After one particularly difficult night, she got up the next morning with virtually no hope of reaching safety. A 13-year-old girl reminded her of their much-loved story of Moses and the Israelites crossing the Red Sea. But I'm not Moses, Gladys cried in despair. Of course you're not, the girl said, but Jehovah is still God. God is still God. God is still our caring parent, even in those moments when we feel absolutely overwhelmed, even when we're faced with the insurmountable, even when we're faced with being totally overwhelmed and with the help and with the present and with the help and with the provision of our heavenly parent, we can find comfort amid the devastating loss of a loved one. We can find strength in our struggles with illness or disease. We can find hope when everything around us seems to be shrouded in darkness and despair. God is with us and God will provide. In our text this morning, Jesus makes some extraordinary promises. Ask, he says, and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door will be open to you. How does he make sense of those promises? By reminding us that God is our Father, and that like any caring parent, God wants the best for each and every one of us. If your son asks for bread, would you give him a stone? If he asks for a fish, would you give him a snake? If you, even in your imperfection, know how to give good gifts to your own children, how much more will God our Father in heaven, give good things to those who ask. In his great love, God cares for each and every one of you. God longs to show you life as it is meant to be lived, and God will provide for you and place if you place your trust in him. On this day, when we as a nation remember and give thanks for our fathers, may we also remember and give thanks for that heavenly parent whose love for us is without limit, and whose care for us is life's richest blessing. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Let's pray. Holy Father, we are so grateful for your presence in our lives, that you know us and love each one of us as your unique child, and that you lead, guide, and provide for us even in those times when we can't see or feel your spirit with us. Help us to always trust in your, you regardless of the circumstances. We ask this in our Lord Jesus' name. Amen. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace, now and forevermore. Amen.